Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Albion. When we last left off, which apparently the video, I'm really glad I decided to end that one. I didn't realize that video had already gone almost 10 minutes. We would have never made it through the text. Oh! Who's that? Who? Who is that? It's... It's Joe! The door opens and suddenly Tom's old friend, Joe, comes in. Joe! Finally a friendly soul. What's going on? Why am I held here like a criminal? Stop, stop. Quiet down, man. First, it's great that you're still alive. I'm not gonna try to do s s an accent. <laughs> we had pretty much written you off, written you and Hofstad off. Sorry, old man. I'm happy to see you too. That's good. I don't know how much time we have. You might have noticed that I opened the door, the door with a doctored card. I already guessed that your visit here was un unofficial. Just tell me what happened. I can't right now. First, you tell me everything. Short and sweet. Short and sweet? Man, you've no idea. Tom describes, describes his unbelievable experiences as compactly as possible. He reports on the Iskai and humans, and his adventures on a world swarming with life. Joe becomes more and more astonished. Wow, I have to digest this sitting down. If I hadn't known you for so long, I'd actually believe that you were a little nuts. All that actually happened? You know, I couldn't have made all that up. Hofstad can confirm everything for you if he had not remained with the DG Contos. Yes, that would help explain it. But that... But that this world is... Now it's your turn, my friend. What happened here? Everything is going on as normal, and that's exactly the problem. You aren't going to tell me that nobody here has, has noticed something is wrong with this planet? Think a minute. If you'd landed on Earth in the middle of the Gobi Desert and seen nothing more of the planet, what would you think then? The landing site was chosen cleverly, that's for sure. That only leaves the conclusion that the that the Al or that the AI and Captain Brandt gave false gave false data to the crew. Obviously, but aside from that, several things have happened. The fact that the atmosphere is more breathable than was believed before is hard to ignore. In addition, during the first mining, we ran into awfully strange and tough beasts. Such highly developed forms of life could hardly be present on an almost lifeless planet. And no one became suspicious. Well, the creatures were repulsed by the security forces. In the beginning, there was a completely crazy series of inexplicable crashes and accidents. That kept us so busy that we hardly had time to sleep, let alone think. The captain opted for the brute force method. It cost us a lot of ammunition and material. But with all the armament we brought with us, we simply glided over all the problems. Slowly, all the innocence subsided. The bonuses were doubled, and many on board just looked the other way. No one else had an opportunity to learn anything about this world. After all, you know it's forbidden to leave the installation area. It all fits together perfectly. It's now very clear why they've put me in cold storage. I was too naive. However, I never ha I would never have suspected DDT would use such drastic methods. Somehow, someone will find out. Maybe, maybe not. Of course, the death of Inspector Beagle now appears in a new light. Right. He could have noticed the manipulation of the probe data and tried to make contact with his office when they discovered him. The intentional overloading of the Overseas console can only be done by Ned, the onboard computer. If the AI is actively involved in the whole affair, and we have, and we have to assume that we should be very careful. There's not much on board the Toronto which can't be controlled by the AI. Nevertheless, we have to get out of here and talk with the other people on board. I know a lot of them. When they know everything about this world, I cannot imagine that they will continue to work on the destruction of the planet. Bonus or no? Maybe. In any case, it's going to be enough trouble just to stop the operation. But that's not the problem. The problem is the AI. What can it do? Cut off our power? Men may have cameras, but there certainly aren't, aren't machine guns screwed to them. A couple of weeks ago, I discovered something that probably only a few people on board know. There is not just one of the artificial bodies through, through which a, the AI communicates with us. There are dozens. 
and that things are dangerous, especially in this number. If Ned is in the position to control all bodies at the same time and gets serious, there will be a massacre. Oh, you're kidding me. You mean DDT would use force against its own people? You can figure that out for yourself. If a ship of this size does not fulfill its mission, there's a major financial loss. It would be the end of the company. That's a motive for extraordinary efforts and measures, don't you think? This is bad. Okay. I could tell you a long story about how this planet and its inhabitants have become a part of me on my jo long journey here, and so on and so forth. I'll add only one thing. This world will only be dug up over my dead body, okay? Joe looks at Tom quietly for a while. After pausing to think, he says, There must be some fantastic places in this world, and I would l surely like to see them. I'm sure I'll regret it, but I'm with you. What can I say? I... How about thank you? <laughs> Forget it. Do you have any idea what we can do next? We have to try and paralyze the AI's energy supply. Then, we can sneak to the entire crew and the security people. I'm assuming the security people aren't all bloodthirsty. Then we can have a little revolution without running the risk of a bloodbath by the AI bodies. I'm assuming that we can't simply pull the plug on the AI, right? I knew you were going to ask that. The central computer which contains Ned's artificial mind is located in the special housing, which even outer space conditions can't hurt. The energy supply is wireless. Our only chance lies in the central control room of the fusion power plant. There has to be a console there which can interrupt the energy transfer to the AI. What are our chances of getting in there? Normally not so good. However, two things can help us. First, the power plant is in the same section we're in now. Secondly, the AI is conf conferring with the captain, probably about you, right now. Ned's verbal communication with a human being always requires more computer time than all other tasks. This means that the Toronto continues to, to be controlled, but other CPU intensive, intensive tasks are suspended. That's helpful. For example, the visual evaluation of camera pictures. Cut a long story short, we could try to reach the power plant room unnoticed through the service level. Cut off the AI and tell the people on board about this planet. Sounds good. Off to the power plant. That's all you can say about it? Well, first we have to find an access to the service deck. There's a, they've cleared this section, but we shouldn't leave. They have cleared this section, but we shouldn't leave this section. Otherwise, we'll have a security. We'll have security down on our backs immediately. They will lock us up before we, you can let out a peep of your story. Sounds good. Let's go. Ah, oh. Joe's joined the party. He's only level 12. He has a video camera. A storage medium. Probably for the video camera. A chip. A couple lockpicks and a stem drink. His lockpicking is amazing. The rest of what he is is... Kinda mediocre. Welcome to the uh, one character you guys hadn't seen yet. Matt. Like the highest dex in the game. He is the other character. He is the technician. He is capable of using guns as well. Now, without using his training points, he sucks at it. But he's the technician. The fact that he can use some of the guns in the game makes him pretty much one of the better people to be sitting back with guns in the game, though. But now that we're through that section of conversation there, we can uh, explore. However, that probably took a long time. I didn't even look at the time when I started this video. Really should have, because I didn't know how much time it was. This looks like I have a medical bay. Maybe I can find some things. That'd be pretty helpful. Especially if there's combat. Um, so everyone knows though, 
I am not going to keep Joe. Let's see if we can use his, uh, his card. Guess not. Nothing like human failure. It's good that there's so many people who can't remember their code numbers. Let's try it. No, not Nick Rita. Someone hastily wrote down a number sequence on a scrap of paper. One zero zero one. That's a pretty terrible code. I don't know why you'd have to write that one down. I couldn't remember that. That would just be slightly problematic in, in general, I think. I mean, I guess I might not know what I'm talking about here, but it sounds like a pretty basic code to not be able to remember. So yeah, not gonna keep Joe. But when we come back, we will continue to explore the Toronto. Try to get the word out that this this planet is not lifeless. So that they won't destroy it, hopefully. <laughs> Who are we kidding? No, that's not gonna work. There has to be a service panel behind this door where we can climb down to the service level. Can you open the door? It shouldn't be more difficult than how you open my door, right? Oh, probably. But I only had one programmable card. You know, how how difficult it is to come by those things? Moreover, it looks as if the door can only be opened with a code. And where do we get this code? Well, from the paper we found, man. Ah. Alright, well then, that that's simple enough. 62. Alright, so when we come back, that's exactly what we'll do. We'll open that door. See you then.